Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. We are back for more science goodness. This one is called Evolutionary Mutations Happening Now. This is from an article by Agam Lee. The name of the article is Four Beneficial Evolutionary Mutations That Humans Are Undergoing Right Now. It's from the Big Thing site. I will put the link in the description. But this is a fascinating question. It's always something that comes up. If you're a evolution denier, I don't know what the fuck to say to you. But science is cool. Science is the best method we have at finding out what's real. This is a fun article. I like it. It gives me a little bit of a answer for people when they say, you know, evolution, you know, prove it or it's happening now. So let's give this a shot. The genetic mutation that drives evolution is random, but here's a list of some beneficial mutations that are known to exist in human beings. By the way, this is a article you can listen to. There's a link here for a button, so you can actually listen to the person other than me. I will read the article mostly word for word. I might stop interject, and at the end, I kind of gush about science. I will begin. Most random genetic changes caused by evolution are neutral, and some are harmful, but a few turn out to be positive improvements. These beneficial mutations are the raw material that may, in time, be taken up by natural selection and spread throughout the population. In this post, I'll, I'll list some examples of beneficial mutations that are known to exist in human beings. Beneficial mutation number one. A poly pop protein, Al Milano. Oh, I always do these science things and I get tongue tied. Maybe that's its charm. Heart disease is one of the scourges of industrialized countries. It's the legacy of an evolutionary past which programmed us to crave energy dense fats. Once a rare and valuable source of calories, now a source of clogged arteries. But there's evidence that evolution has the potential to deal with it. All humans have a gene for a protein called a polypoprotein AI or AL. AL, 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 whatever the fuck it is, which is part of the system that transports cholesterol to the bloodstream. APOAL is one of the HDLs already known to be beneficial because they remove cholesterol from artery walls. But a small community in Italy is known to have a mutant version of this protein named Apoliprotein El Milano, or ApoAIM for short. ApoAIM, whatever the fuck. ApoAIM is even more effective than ApoI, Al, at removing cholesterol from cells and dissolving artery plaques and additionally functions as antioxidant, preventing some of the damage from inflammation that normally occurs in arteriosclerosis. People with the AIM gene have significantly lower levels of risk than the general population for heart attack and stroke, and pharmaceutical companies are looking into marketing an artificial version of the protein as a cardioprotective drug. There are also drugs in the pipeline based on a different mutation, in a gene called PCSK9, which has a similar effect. People with this mutation have as much as an 88% lower risk of heart disease. Wow, that's cool. Beneficial mutation number two, increased bone density. One of the genes that governs bone density in human beings is called low-density lipoprotein, receptor-related protein 5 or LRP5 for short. Mutations which impair the function of LRPS are known to cause osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. 
joy and the fun of my podcast. But a different kind of mutation can amplify its function, causing one of the most unusual human mutations known. This mutation was first discovered, fortunately, when a young person from a Midwest family was in a serious car crash from which they walked away with no broken bones. X-rays found that they, as well as other members of the same family, had bones significantly stronger and denser than average. One doctor who studied the condition said, none of those people ranging in age from 3 to 93 had ever had a broken bone. In fact, they seemed resistant not to just injury, but to normal age-related skeletal degeneration. Some of them have benign bony growths on the roof of their mouths, but other than that, the condition has no side effects. Although, as the article notes dryly, it does make it more difficult to float. <laughs> as with ApoAIM, some drug companies are researching how to use this as the basis for a therapy that could help people with osteoporosis and other skeletal diseases. That's, that's pretty cool. Beneficial mutation number three, malaria, malaria resistance. The classic example of evolutionary change in humans is a hemoglobin mutation named HBS, that makes red blood cells take on a curved sickle shape. With one copy, it confers resistance to malaria, but with two copies, it causes the illness of sickle cell anemia. This is not about that mutation. As reported in 2001, there's a link, Italian researchers studying the population in an African country of Burkina Faso found a protective effect associated with a different variant of hemoglobin named HBC. People with just one copy of this gene are 29% less likely to get malaria, while people with two copies enjoy a 93% reduction in risk. And this gene variant causes, at worst, a mild anemia, nowhere near as debilitating as sickle cell disease. Beneficial mutation number four, tetrachromatic vision. Tetrachromatic vision. Most mammals have poor color vision because they have only two kinds of cones, the retinal cells that discriminate different colors of light. Humans, like other primates, have three kinds. The legacy of a past where good color vision for finding ripe, brightly colored fruit was a survival advantage. The gene for one kind of cone, which responds most strongly to blue, is found on chromosome 7. The two other kinds, which are sensitive to red and green, are both on the X chromosome. Since men have only one X, a mutation which disables either red or the green gene will produce a red-green color blindness, while women have a backup copy. This explains why this is almost exclusively a male condition. But here's a question. What happens if a mutation to the red or the green gene, rather than disabling it, shifts the range of colors to which it responds? The red and green genes arose in just this way from the duplication of a divergence of a single ancestral cone gene. To a man, this would make no real difference. He'd still have three color receptors, just a different set than the rest of us. But if this happened to one of the woman's cone genes, she'd have the blue, the red, and the green on the X chromosome and a mutated fourth on the other, which means she'd have four different color receptors. She would be, like birds and turtles, a natural tetrachromatic Theoretically capable of discriminating shades of color the rest of us can't tell apart. Does this mean she'd see brand new colors the rest of us could never experience? That's an open question. And we have evidence that this just happened on rare occasions. In one study of color discrimination, at least one woman showed exactly the results we would expect from a true tetrachromat. Tetrachromat. And there's images... This is fun. This is always uh, uh, fascinating for me. You know, what happens with evolution, you know, it affects a population over time. It's not this thing you're going to see. And all this clamoring bullshit debates about evolution and uh, arguments. I've watched all the debates. I mean, going back to when they were first filming them, it's such nonsense. Evolution is a fact. There might be changes to the way things work, but for the most part, we get an understanding and science is not perfect. But to show that these mutations happen, to come up with theories 
hypothesis, well, hypothesis first, I guess, because theories and science is a solid thing. Come up with these ideas, hypothesis, and then to see it happen because of what the data suggests is part of science. And to know that we are changing and there's crazy things. You watch some of the shows, they're all out there. You can do Google searches, YouTube and all that stuff. Uh, people in this region can hold their breath longer. Um, the people, they help them put the gear up on the mountains, like uh, Everest, Chirpas. This is evolution happening, and slowly sometimes, and maybe in the gaps of time, as we age, we'll see these things happen like this article suggests. So how people are as fascinated about this stuff as me. Uh, yes, uh, you know, someone put a me someone had a meme, a friend of a friend type thing, and it was to the effect of you ever once in your life try to see if you had superpowers? And they shared it and my my comment it was how about every day? Multiple times a day. I don't know if I put them multiple times a day. But this would be fascinating. This is the X-Men. This is uh, metahumans. Uh, you know, plot lines of certain comic books and sci-fi. Mutations and uh, one of my favorite first seasons of television, uh, Heroes. Uh, uh, showed it and did it great. This is... Uh, Fun topic, if you're not a evolutionary denier, I mean, I don't know if anybody is. I haven't seen anybody, I don't think, on my feed ever. Well, someone hinted at it once, and then I said something to the effect of, you don't think evolution is real? And then I put a question, I was like, how old do you think the Earth is? Like, I, They led me to believe that they didn't believe in that stuff. And then it was like, oh, I'm only joking. But they're out there. There are people thinking, believe in flat earth. So all that stuff, enjoyable as it is to see a dumpster fire once in a while and to go back and uh, dip my toe in that fetid pool of nonsense. It's good to be aware that there are science backing this stuff up. You know, mutations could happen. And they could be beneficial. Stay healthy. Take care, everybody. Till next time, my best to you and yours.